In Italy, porchetta is serious business. Roadside stores rub boneless whole hogs with fennel, garlic, and herbs. Then they spit roast the pigs until the meat is juicy and the skin is hard and crackly. Now it is so good that a porchetta sandwich is literally nothing more than meat on a white roll. But we are not in Italy and we're not gonna ask you to cook a whole pig. So Dan is here and he's gonna show us a great version of porchetta that you and I can make at home. So Bridget, this is our pig right here. <laughs> it shrunk. It shrunk a little bit, <laughs> tiny little pig. American pigs are tiny now. So we're actually going to turn porchetta, which is a great street side food, into a really nice roast. And for that, we decided to shrink it down and we're gonna use a boneless pork butt. Mm. Same thing we use for barbecue, it's gonna get meltingly tender, but we have to wait on that a second. All right. First, we gotta deal with the flavor, and porchetta has a very distinctive flavor profile. So we have three tablespoons of fennel seed. We're gonna use our coffee grinder here. We don't use coffee in it, so it doesn't taste like coffee, but it's gonna grind to a nice fine powder. So we've got a lot of fennel in there. It's gonna really come through in the meat, which is great. Okay, so the next ingredient is a half a cup of rosemary. So this is fresh rosemary. It's about two bunches. Next, a quarter cup of fresh thyme. We also have 12 cloves of garlic, a tablespoon of black pepper, and two teaspoons of kosher salt. So I'm just gonna pulse this until it's broken down a little bit. Okay, so that looks good, smells oh, good. Smells amazing. Now you needed to pre-grind the fennel because it would have never ground down enough with all the other ingredients in the food processor. Next up we have a half cup of extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna process this until it gets nice and smooth. Oh. Okay, that looks and smells really good. So we have our nice six pound boneless pork butt here, nice fat cap on top. We don't have skin in this case to get nice and crackly and give us that nice comparison to the mm. tender meat, but the fat, if we treat it right, it'll do the same thing for okay. us. Okay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is use my chef's knife and cross hatch it. It's spaced one inch apart. So it's gonna allow some of the fat to render, it's gonna get really crispy, and I'm gonna go in both directions. I'm gonna go down through the fat, but not into the meat. So I've got a nice cross hatch on this, and what I'm gonna do is actually split this into two roasts, okay. which we find cook better, it's a lot nicer for slicing too. So I'm gonna find the grain, and we wanna cut with the grain, because eventually we're gonna carve against, against the grain. We're gonna use a boning knife, you can do this with a paring knife, and make some really deep slits into mm. this meat here, where we can get all that seasoning in. We're gonna go all the way through there, I'm gonna start like this, and then I kinda tilt it out so I can make sure I get all the way through on that side. Set that one aside, we're gonna do the same thing over here. Okay, so now we're gonna start seasoning. We've got all these places for that to go. So we're gonna take them, put them fat side down. I'm gonna season all sides of the meat except the fat cap with a couple teaspoons of kosher salt. Now Dan looks like a super fancy chef because he's holding his hand way up high as he's seasoning the roast. But that's actually a really good idea because you get a more even disbursement of the salt the higher up you go. So now it's time to get into our paste. This is where it gets really messy, but also really fun. So we're gonna take it and put it all over and also really get into here. So I worked some of that salt into the sides here, but we're really gonna get the paste in there. Really work it inside all of these nice slits we made. I'm going to tie these up with three pieces of twine on each one. So they kind of hold their shape a little bit better and they're gonna cook for a long period of time, be very tender, we want them to hold together. Okay. So we're gonna turn these fat side up. I like to start in the middle. So as Dan ties these knots, he's actually making that first loop twice right around the string, and that way it's going to hold itself in place, and you don't need another person's finger to hold it in place while you make a double knot. Works for Christmas presents, and it works for pork. Yes. Well, let's talk a little bit about pork shoulder. A whole pork shoulder weighs in around 18 pounds, and that runs from the top of the front shoulder all the way down to the trotter. Now, the pork butt or Boston butt is the top part of the shoulder. The cut is comprised of several muscles and it can be poorly butchered when the bone is removed. So it's best to purchase a pork butt that's not in any netting or under plastic wrap. And that way you can see that the entire cut is intact. The final thing our pork needs before it goes into the fridge is a nice coating on the fat that's gonna help it crisp and brown. And so for that, we're gonna use a tablespoon of kosher salt, a teaspoon of ground black pepper, and one of our favorite ingredients, a quarter of a teaspoon of baking soda. Now baking soda raises the pH on the surface here, and when it's more alkaline, it's gonna brown better. So I'm just gonna mix this up and season away. Okay, so I have a nice sprinkling on here. I'm gonna use my fingers to rub it in, try and get it in those crevices that we created with the cross hatch. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna transfer these to our wire rack, set in a rim baking sheet. And these are gonna go into the fridge uncovered. We're gonna leave them there for at least six hours and up to 24 hours. They're gonna dry on the surface a little bit. It's gonna help them brown in the oven. Great. 
So 24 hours has passed and we've allowed a lot of that salt and seasoning to get inside the meat. So now it's time to roast it. When we played around with this recipe and did a lot of testing, we wanted to figure out how to get it really, really juicy. We know that low and slow from barbecue is really good, right? We get super tender meat, so we wanted to do that here. The problem is if you go really low, about a 250 degree oven, it takes about six hours. A little too long for pork head, a in little too my long. book, yes. So the part of the reason that it takes so long is when you get to about 150, 160 degrees, we get evaporative cooling. And it cools the meat so much that it can just kind of stall at that temperature for a long period of time. So in barbecue world, they solve that by wrapping the meat in foil. It prevents that evaporative cooling and allows you to get right through that temperature. So what we're gonna actually do is transfer this to a roasting pan. We're gonna cover it with foil. So this way we can go into a 325 degree oven, which is relatively hot, but it's gonna trap moisture in here so it's not gonna go over 212 degrees. And that moisture in there is gonna allow it to go past that stall and cook pretty quickly. So it's been two and a half hours. We're gonna take it out and temp it. Okay. If you wouldn't mind turning the oven up to 500 degrees. So let's take the temp here. Now we're looking for, at this point, 180 degrees. And you got it. And I got it, nice, that looks great. So we get really fast cooking in this nice moist environment, but as you can see, we don't get a lot of browning. Nope. So we're gonna solve that problem. What I'm gonna do is transfer these off to this plate here. So this is really flavorful liquid. We're not gonna use it in this recipe, but it's like instant soup. It's good to keep. So next we're gonna line it with foil here. So just this little layer of foil right here will help any of the fat that renders out from smoking in that really hot oven. Okay. So before we put them back in, I'm actually gonna take off the twine. It's for good reason. So once we get this nice and crispy, you can easily pull that fat off. We want that to stay on there. Okay, so now they go right back in. And fat cap side up, right? That, oh yeah, we gotta get that fat nice and crispy. So we want that up. So once our oven is at 500 degrees, we're gonna put the pork back in and we're gonna cook it for 20 to 30 minutes until it hits 190. It's gonna be beautifully crisp on the outside. I cannot wait. Oh. Ooh, that was good, right? You delivered on your promise, that's for sure. Oh, just look at that. It's still sizzling. We're it still getting crispier fat. So I'm gonna transfer these to our carving board over here. Ooh. And those are gonna need to rest for 20 minutes before we slice into them. So this is nice and tender, but we still wanna cut across the grain, just as we would with any roast. It's gonna make it even more tender. So I'm gonna cut some nice, thick, kind of half-inch slices. But man, this knife just goes through like butter. This is so tender. Look at how juicy that is. Oh, that's just beautiful. Incredible. Yeah, this isn't the type of roast that you can really cut into very thin deli slices. Give you a couple pieces here. Thank you. Just that rosemary and the fennel and the garlic. Mm. Mm. I'm excited about this. Mm. Having a moment. That's <laughs> <laughs> what it's all about. So it's not quite as tender as, say, something like a pork shoulder that you would make for pulled pork. You want that almost to be overcooked, but it still melts in your mouth. Oh, yeah. Every single bite has the garlic, the fennel, salt and pepper. I would put this on a roll and just eat this. Yes. No condiments needed. We, didn't, we don't need a sauce with it. No. It's got that much flavor. So for our easy porchetta, score the fat on a pork shoulder, rub with a flavorful fennel paste, and then cut and tie into two pieces. Cook the roast in a moderate oven, then finish at 500 degrees to crisp the top. So from our test kitchen to your kitchen, an easy, tasty, amazing home version of porchetta. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.